Welcome back to Art Forger. This is going to be an update on what this bike looks like after a thousand miles. few things right away that I noticed in getting to the thousand miles. I did do a lot of tightening and put some Loctite on a lot of these bolts. The one that I did miss was the passenger foothold here and consequently it, it fell off at some point. I didn't even notice it. Other things, a pretty big thing here was the heat sink or the heat diffuser or the heat dis disperser. The part that was uh, welded on here, uh, that part came off and it was only held on by the, the bolt that was there and it was just kind of rattling and making all kinds of unpleasant noises. And you don't want to be going down the road and have your motorcycle sound like it's falling apart. And so I just took that off and, and I put this guy on here. This does a fantastic job of protecting my leg and diffusing heat. I, I just got done riding this and I'm touching this part here. And uh, if you know anything about motorcycles and the exhaust system, it is extremely hot. You can fry an egg in seconds on it. I wouldn't dare touch this metal part here, but uh, this part here, I don't know what that is. It's, it's some kind of uh, heat barrier of some sort. It's interwoven in there. It does a fantastic job at it though. So that's the second thing. So some things have fallen off. Another thing that was on here that in the beginning uh, that I mentioned in the first video was that it only came with one of these, these uh, nuts here for your back brake and I assume that's all you really need. I, I never needed anything else for it but I wanted to be secure and so I did pick up a 12 millimeter bolt and put it on this plastic here. Uh, I just barely tightened it on there. I'm going to tighten it the rest of the way um, but I just got back from the, the hardware store. So 12 millimeter and then you can secure that and it, uh, your back brake will feel the same to you each time that you use it until your brakes wear down. But this won't be the cause of it if you put that other bolt on there, which I'm fine with. Some people are just like, you know, whatever. I don't need that and you do you, that's fine. A couple of other things uh, with Ducatis, I know that every, uh, I think it's the first 300 miles of breaking it in, uh, you have to go in and get the valves checked and make sure that they're at the, the right spec after 300 miles or 500 miles, I can't remember which one. I actually know a motorcycle mechanic, he's been doing it for 20 plus years and he checked them for me and said, no, they're perfect. So uh, you don't need to do that. It's not a Ducati, not even close. <laughs> but I kind of wanted to run the full gamut on this and really get a a look at what this thing is made of. Still runs really, really, really well. When you press the ignition, it turns over immediately. I love the fuel injection, the EFI. It does have a kickstart here. I, I haven't used that. I'm not going to use it. I'm sure that works fine. I'm not interested in that at all. I will say this does not feel like a dirt bike. It, it doesn't. Uh, you sit up high. I'm not uncomfortable with it. It really doesn't feel like you're going 70 when you're going 70 on a highway. But in that same effect, if you get on dirt with this, you will slide, you'll slide around. I, I hit the brakes uh, turning uh, and it, that kind of felt like a dirt bike on the street where uh, I was able to drift a little bit and maintain that control because this is less than 300 pounds. But as far as that control and being kind of a dual sport, it really is more like a street bike in my opinion. Not as far as get up and go, but as far as how it handles. Some other things at a thousand miles, uh, the air filter, yeah, you weren't, you're, I, I'm gonna change that out. I'm probably not gonna do that on video because I don't have any of the stuff here with me. Another thing would be to check your tire pressures. It's gonna be 40 PSI in the rear and 32 in the front. For this one specifically, yours may differ depending on your model and uh, tire pressure for yours. Another thing I won't do on video is change the oil. If you want to see maintenance on how to change the oil in here and what to use, uh, I use 10W40 Valvoline. And if you're interested in knowing more about that, I do have a maintenance video on this and a full length video from unboxing, building, and maintenance and getting this thing street legal. So you can check those out. Another thing if you're interested, you, if you're digging this hat, you've been seeing this, uh, this is the Greater Idaho Movement, you can go ahead and go to the Arm Forger store in the links below. 
An additional thing I want to mention is uh, CV Life. I'll leave a link for them as well. They sell some pretty uh, top notch for a little price firearm accessories. Uh, you're looking at scopes, bipods, you can get uh, red dots and look for it coming up in the near future. They sent me a laser bore cider. I already have one, but this one's green and it's rechargeable. So I, I'm going to check that out. I'll do an honest review on it. Uh, they've seen pretty legit so far. So we'll get at that and I'll leave a link. There has been no catastrophic issues so far whatsoever. As far as this goes, if you keep up on the maintenance and you tighten some of these bolts that you might have missed, uh, you should be in the clear with this. It should be fine. You will most likely need to replace your heat sink here. And my right mirror, I need to adjust because it's, it's not staying where I want it to. It moves with the wind, but that's just a, a turn of a bolt and I'll be doing that here pretty soon. I think the main thing I wanted to mention here though, because this was a big deal, uh, I was wondering why my clutch was not doing what I wanted it to do when I was going down the highway and I was trying to switch gears. So when I did hold in, in the clutch, it would just start going in first gear and so I knew something was amiss and I, I assumed it was the the cables here I did tighten up uh, the one on the handle here right here and then I followed the line down and here it was and you can barely see it because I have this heat diffuser in the way but right in here there's two bolts there's one on this side and one over here. I had to get that at a really perfect setting there. And, and now there's very minimal play. Uh, the clutch isn't exactly how I want it. When I do hold it in, I have to bring it out to about right here before it starts catching. And then boom, it's in the gear right about there. And so what I like is a very easy, steady clutch where it just starts going uh, gradually, but that's not really a possibility with what we have here. So that's kind of a big deal, but it works. It works fine. There's, there's, you know, nothing really to it. It's, it's just like trigger control. If you're waiting for that reset and the reset isn't there, um, you know, you're used to that reset. And I was used to being able to just kind of easily, gently come off of it and start going and idle. But this one's pretty abrupt. You have to uh, maintain some throttle. And that's fine. Not a deal breaker for me. The other thing I will be doing here is making this uh, throttle tighter. There's a lot of play in it and then it just goes for it. And so I, I will try to make this more gradual of a throttle turn here. All right, if you like this video, uh, hit the like button. If not, uh, you know, carry on. And as always, do what's right and stay safe. Oh, almost forgot. If you thought that backpack was cool, I'll leave a link to that as well and you can pick that one up. I'm gonna do a full length review on that so you can see all the features and all of the cool things that it does and uh, kind of pros and cons. And it'll be a very quick, succinct, precise video. So stay tuned for that.